Hi my lovies, I am back today to do a new Tia Talk video. It's basically where I answer all the questions that you post, whether it be on Instagram or Facebook. So this time around, I had a lot of questions, which is great. Thank you so much for asking. Um, so I may not be able to get to all of them in this video, but I will definitely save the ones that I am not able to get to for the next video. And then some of them were a little personal, so I won't be able to answer those. But let's get started with the ones that I selected. The first question is from Rui. <laughs> she asks, will you ever do an apartment tour video? It's definitely something that Trey and I want to do for you guys. Um, it's a very popular request. It's just that there are certain video tours on YouTube now that do it in the like cribs type style. And we wanna do something different. We, want, we don't want to like seem cookie cutter or seem like we're, you know, copying someone else. So if you have any suggestions on how we can be creative in our display of our house tour or how to go about filming it, please leave your suggestion below and we will definitely consider it because we want to make it happen for you guys. The next question is from Mendisa Sheree. What tips do you have for an incoming 1L law student starting this semester? The first thing that I would tell you to do is to enjoy your summer because First year is just, it involves a lot. It involves a lot of your time, your energy. Um, it takes away a lot of your sleep. And it's kind of like, I don't know, the weeding out process of law school. If you can make it through your first year, you're golden. But that first year can be really tough on people. So I definitely suggest that you come up with a routine that you do weekly in order to keep yourself focused and disciplined. And that requires um, a lot of studying, a lot of packing lunches so that you can study in between classes, maybe like in the library or at a cafe nearby. Um, and kind of break it up. You have to have a balance. While you're in law school, yes, there is a lot of work and a lot of reading and writing, but you need to balance your life because otherwise you're going to burn yourself out. So definitely make time for family and friends and, you know, going out and having fun. Law school is a privilege, it, it, you know, it's hard, but it is doable. While it is um, a little bit more taxing as far as the work is concerned because it's a different type of learning style, they practice the Socratic method. Um, it is something for you to get used to, but girl, within two to three months, you'll have your you know routine together and your learning style perfected and you'll be golden. The next question is from Lise Marie. Do you ever get nervous about any life situations? In other words, what type of things makes you nervous, especially involving people? Girl, I have grown, okay? Before I started this channel, um, I don't know, I was very critical about myself and I am an introvert by heart. But whenever I do find myself getting out there or going out with, you know, with my friends or going to a party or an event, I feel that when I'm there, I have to be like really active and bubbly and stuff. And then I don't want to go anywhere for like the next week or two weeks. I'm like, that was enough stimuli for me. And I'm going back into my little bookworm mode. Things that make me nervous are meeting new people. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I don't know what to say. What if they don't like me? What if I don't meet their expectations? Like, I'm so awkward sometimes when it comes to like small talk, but starting this channel and just the growth that I've experienced from, you know, talking in front of the camera to you guys or meeting you know, some of the lovies out on the street or when we travel, it's really allowed me to grow and just kind of come out of my shell and experience this new type of freedom when dealing with that, you know, fear or anxiety when it comes to meeting new people or trying new things. So I just want to make sure I don't live my life in fear or allow fear to keep me from, you know, being great. Crystal Lynn too asks, Hey Tia, what would constitute a perfect day for you? Good question. Oh my gosh. Um, I guess it would be maybe if I wake up and I'm served breakfast in bed by my wonderful husband and then we're able to just kind of like spend time snuggling and doing a little pillow talk and maybe we can go out later on in the day and 
I don't know, maybe see a movie or something like a matinee. And then afterwards we can go eat dinner out on like a terrace or somewhere outside. And it's a really nice, warm, but breezy day. And then um, we just come home and eat yogurt and I get a massage while I'm sitting on the couch. And yeah. That would be a perfect day. <laughs> when will you have a meet and greet at Atlanta? I adore you, Trey and Duty Bear. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I know all of my Atlanta lovies are like, all right, Sia, you did an NYC meet and greet. When are you going to show love to your Atlanta lovies? And that is definitely in the works, you guys. It's just been so crazy because every weekend, that has passed, we've been really busy, whether it's Trey shooting a wedding or I have something with you know work or with my friends, like baby showers and going to their wedding. So it's just been really jam packed. You know how the summer can be. But it's looking like the fall will be around the best time that we're going to schedule an Atlanta meet and greet. And we wanna make sure that we do it right um, because we know that we have a lot of Atlanta lovies who are so eager to meet us. And definitely when we do have it, I will bring Duty Bear. Tasha J. Mack asks, do you ever think about doing a career change and make YouTube your full-time job? <laughs> Yes! If YouTube could be my full-time job, that would be such a blessing. You know, it's definitely something that I love to do and that I wish that I had more time to, you know, sit down and do videos and just come up with more creative content and film every day if I could for you guys. But right now, it's just, it's not an opportunity or possibility right now. But who knows what God has in store for us for the next few years. I mean, if this could be something that I could do and earn revenue from it, then wonderful. But at the same time, I don't want to have to rely on it as a way of making money and then becoming, I don't know, consumed by numbers or about the amount of people watching or statistics. I want it to still be fun and exciting and very organic. Um, so I don't want to get wrapped up in like having to do things through sponsorships or Although those are great opportunities and can be very fun, to me it's just about doing what I love and showcasing that and just allowing my life to speak through the camera and allowing that life to be organic as possible through the lens of the camera. So what you see is definitely what you get. So the last question from Instagram is from Translucent Afterthoughts and she asks, when are you guys gonna have cute babies? All right, so I know this is a hot topic, um, and I know that all of you guys are ready for us to have babies and add to the family, and that is definitely something that, you know, we want as well. And, you know, we're working on a timeline, and babies are definitely in our future, and we want to have two. We want to have a boy and a girl in that order, if it's in, you know, his will. Yes, we do want babies. Babies are coming to the Patterson family. We can't tell you exactly when the timeline is, but of course it is in the future. Joylyn Love Hogan asks, I'd like to know, you and Trey married in your early 20s. What were your feelings then? Were you afraid? Were you confident that you make a great wife? When Trey proposed, we had been together for about seven or eight years at that time. So. We had learned a lot about each other and we'd gone through a lot and it was just a point in time where we were both really ready and our families were ready. Like, we do a lot of things, you know, intermingling with our family members and so we're really close and we really love one another and it just made sense to, you know, take it to that next level. So we weren't scared or nervous at all. Like. Trey was like 100% confident that this is what God wanted and this wasn't God's timing and you know he was smiling down on us that day in San Diego when he asked and I said yes. The first few months of marriage was absolute bliss but we were trying so hard to be picture perfect man and wife and you know that can be very stressful so after three months of just, you know, me trying to cook every day and him trying to be like this, you know, super handy 
uh, you know, king of the house type figure. We were just kind of like, look, we sat down and we were like, can we just, you know, go back to just being simple and just be best friends again? And that's when we were just able to just live life, you know, simply and for it to be beautiful and stress-free, for us to love each other unconditionally and learn more about each other and grow in that way. If I could give any advice for new wives out there, I would just say to know that this is only the beginning and you don't have to model yourself after what you see on TV or even after what type of wife or mother your, your mom is. This is something that you can create and develop with just you and your husband and make it your own and know that you have that foundation in your faith whatever that may be and let that carry you and sustain you the next question comes from delicia carter and she asks does trey ever get on your nerves how do you deal with that man trey is an extreme extrovert and he is like off the charts when it comes to making friends and just fitting in everywhere he goes and telling random jokes and just making life fun. Yes, there are times when he gets on my nerves and then I'm like, babe, turn it down a notch. But that's just, that's just Trey. And I accepted that, you know, once we started dating and, you know, seriously and definitely when I said yes, that's what makes it fun, you know. I enjoy the big personality because there are days when, you know, I'm just kind of like, oh, I'm the introvert Tia and he really just helps to bring me out of my shell um, and he makes it easier for me like if we go somewhere or something I know that you know he's gonna turn it up and he's gonna help make it fun and I can just sit back and laugh at him the next question is from Pam Burton and she asks what advice in retrospect you wish you were told or warned about before going natural I wish that I was told on how to properly moisturize your hair. When I first went natural, I didn't do like a big chop. I transitioned over time, like over years. Um, because when I went natural, um, it was not popular at all. This was, I've been natural for almost nine or 10 years now. So this was back in the day where it was not the thing to do to go natural, okay? Chicks still dig their perms. Because I wasn't moisturizing my hair properly because I just, I had never had the experience of having to do that, I had a lot of breakage in the beginning. And so I had to end up cutting, um, you know, a couple of inches off my hair because of that breakage just for it being really dry and really just not knowing how to retain that moisture. So, and you know, that's something that I, continue to learn about my hair what's the best product to use or the best steps to take in order to moisturize my hair now my hair is a lot more healthy and i kind of feel like i have a good grasp on how to moisturize it i do use the lock method and you guys can check out my previous videos or my instagram i do have a picture up there of the products that i use in order to do the lock method that i use on a pretty regular basis. Fee Marlin asks, what are your guidelines for a great relationship and do you have advice for single ladies? All right, so let me go backwards. My advice for single ladies is basically this is your time um, to just focus on your relationship with God and um, really nurture yourself in Him, grow that relationship and you know find fulfillment in your life as a single lady in Christ. And I know that it can be, you know, much easier said than done because, you know, we're so wrapped around into finding that perfect guy, getting married, having kids, creating that lifestyle. But, you know, singlehood is a very important season in your life that I feel like you should really make sure that you take advantage of and milk it. Uh, because marriage is wonderful. Marriage is great. But marriage is different. And so, you know, there are a lot of things about being single that sometimes you miss in marriage. Um, so, you know, have fun, enjoy it, be responsible, uh, and just know that it's just a season in your life. And like seasons, they come and go. Abby Moncure asks, what would you say was the hardest lesson about life that took you the longest to learn as a woman? Oh my gosh, you guys are coming with some awesome questions. For a long time, I struggled with perfectionism. 
And I know that this is probably something that a lot of you women on the other side were like, mm, girl, I feel you. Whether it be, you know, in school, whether it be things that I do at church, whether it be, you know, how I look, what I wear, um, my relationships, and, you know, yeah, I just really opened my eyes in many different um, life decisions and learning lessons to just allow me to see that I'm not in control. Like, it's not going to be perfect. I am not perfect. I have flaws, you know, and I'm definitely not in control of my life. And I have to allow myself to understand and realize that, to give him the reins and for me to just say, there are times when I'm going to fall. There are times when I'm going to fail. But failure and conflict is not necessarily bad in all instances. It allows you to grow. It allows you to be stretched. It allows you to expand. It allows you to go through something in order to minister in someone else's life. But it took me a long time to get there. And I still, I'm still learning. I mean, you learn every day. The last question comes from Alicia Marie McLaurin Williams. Do you and Trey act the same off the vlog? Definitely. Let me tell you something. When we vlog on A Beautiful Life, that's our vlog channel, that is the realest reality TV you are going to get. You know, we have these reality shows, Housewives of Atlanta, you know, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Those are staged, and I hope you all know that they're staged. I know for us, everything that we do, everything that we show, whether we're traveling or we're doing something or an activity on the weekend, that's something that we just came up with, you know, as a regular family would, just to, you know, get out of the house and do an outing. So we don't stage anything, we don't go over lines, we don't, you know, film something and say, oh, you know, that didn't sound right, let's do it again. No, what you see is definitely what you get. And of course, we don't film our entire weekend. You only see just this really small window of what we do and how we live. So, you know, do I think it's a fair representation of our life and our lifestyle? Absolutely. Um, am I going to put, you know, negative stuff up there like when we have arguments or when we're going through conflict? Absolutely not. Because I just don't feel like, you know, that's something that should be broadcast for the public to see. We do deal with certain things, you know, in the vlog where we're able to talk it out and really share that with you all. But, you know, there is a certain balance and we like to keep, you know, things private. And that's not necessarily always bad things or anything like that or conflict. It's just, you know, you know, when you're doing vlogs, you have to be really careful um, with, how much you allow people to see but at the end of the day you guys how we act on the vlog is definitely how we are in real life which sometimes i'm like sad sadly it's true <laughs> well that wraps up all of the questions i know this video is a lot longer than my usual videos but i wanted to try to get to as many questions as i could and so thank you all so much for submitting your questions i will definitely look forward to getting more questions next time i will be posting a reminder within the next few weeks on instagram and facebook to let you all know when the next tales talk will be and i hope to see you there and answer your questions then so have a great weekend and I will see you next time. Bye. Thanks so much for watching, my lovies. I had so much fun answering all of your questions. You guys had some really good ones. Don't forget to check out our blog channel, A Beautiful Life, where we vlog every weekend. I'll see you guys next Saturday. Love you. Mwah.